Liquid biopsy has really changed the, uh, the way we look at uh, cancer diagnosis. It's a tube of blood. Uh, we, patients used to have to go through so many uh, uh, different modalities, imaging with, with, um, uh, with tissue biopsy. Well, that is still uh, important, but liquid biopsy really adds a lot more uh, non-invasive information, and that could be done very quickly with very fast turnaround time. We have shown in studies at Memorial Sloan Kettering that liquid biopsy has a much shorter turnaround time in getting results for patients compared to tissue uh, next generation sequencing. So the blood test, when we isolate circulating tumor DNA and we do next generation sequencing around it, we can get the results in uh, less than one to two weeks. And that is what the patient needs. They need the patient results quick so you can select the best treatment for the patients and get on with it right away. So that has really uh, revolutionized the way we uh, look at cancer molecular diagnosis. And this is playing a critical role in terms of selecting the right drug for the right patient. So we don't just do chemotherapy, general use for everyone, but we wanna select what is the best treatment for that unique individual. Not a textbook approach in terms of all lung cancers, but the unique individual. That is patient-centric care. We have to understand the characteristics of the patient and the tumor uh, and the interplay. So liquid biopsy serves that role uh, in selecting initial uh, treatment decisions, in, especially in the advanced metastatic setting where there's a lot of t uh, tumor that shed DNA into the bloodstream. After tr uh, treatment may have failed, we want to understand the resistance mechanisms that the cancer may be driving uh, behind the progression. And that is something liquid biopsy can also help in detecting the resistance mechanisms as was demonstrated in this biomarker analysis. And that could pick up additional alterations that could also be targeted with a different drug to switch it off again and shut down the cancer and shrink it. So that in this later line setting, this could also be very useful uh, in detecting resistance and switching therapy. Uh, and then right now we're also lo looking at treatment monitoring uses of liquid biopsy. So throughout the course of treatment, you can do repeated blood tests, which is pretty standard for patients. You've got to check the, the blood counts. So you add a liquid biopsy to it and you can look at the changes in circulating DNA levels and the uh, varying allele fractions in the, in the blood to see the dynamic changes of these cl uh, genetic clones of cancer, to see how the drug is, is is having this interplay with the cancer, whether it goes down or it goes up, and also the dynamics of it. And this could also give us very important information how the drug is working in the cancer, whether the treatment is working, treatment is not working, do we need to escalate treatment, is it not enough, or do we de-escalate the treatment? Are you getting too much treatment and the cancer is under control? So, and, and we can perhaps we can uh, de-escalate to lower the treatment toxicities. So liquid biopsy is playing an emerging role in uh, uh, the monitoring of patients to optimize uh, precision medicine. In the, we, we are also, as the technology advances, we're moving into earlier stages of cancer. This is especially in definitive curative uh, uh, therapy, including surgery and radiation for early stage cancers where it's curable, but we don't know if they're really cured or not. You wanna maybe give some chemotherapy adjuvantly after the surgery or radiation for some insurance policy, just in case they come back, but we don't really know if they come back. Now with advanced technology, we can do a blood test, potentially find out whether there's any residual cancer clones in lurking around in the bloodstream or in the lymphatics. We don't know where they are, but you can't see it on the scan, but it's there. In that case, we want to intervene with chemoimmunotherapy or targeted therapy to, to get the cancer, eradicate the cancer and take it out at its roots uh, before they come back uh, in, in the liver or the bone or the lung. So this is so-called minimal residual disease, MRD guided treatment. This is still undergoing more testing, more research because the technological uh, demands are very high. It's very difficult to de detect MRD when you don't even see the cancer, but you're finding traces of the cancer in the DNA. And then the holy grail is moving into the screening population. So you don't have cancer, you just, your age, you know, you're at a certain age or you have a family history and you have uh, some risk of, of, uh, of cancer, uh, lifestyle behavior and so forth. So those pa people are not patients, they've not been, never been diagnosed, just getting on with life. But we all can be hit with cancer. Can we use liquid biopsy as a screening tool to detect cancer when it's curable? And that is a blood test that, that, that we can deploy. The technology is still in evolution. There still needs to be a lot of research, a lot of clinical trials to validate and to continually improve the technology 
but potentially in the future, this could be one thing that could reduce cancer mortality. Uh, I'm, it's not proven yet. We're still doing a lot of study on that front, uh, but uh, certainly I'm very hopeful with the technological advancements going on.